to Startup Funding with Dr. Roshana Novellis, the podcast for business owners ready to attract funding. We talk with founders who have successfully raised money, venture capitalists, and angel investors who have funded amazing startups. You'll get all the information that you need to take your business to the next level. Now your host, wealth advocate, Dr. Roshana Novellis. Hi, I'm your host, Dr. Roshana Novellis. And today we have Rochelle Rinkins as our guest. Stay tuned. I guess my words of advice is basically, you know, keep going. Just when you think that you have kind of reached your limit, as long as you feel that you ha- you're doing it, you have well intentions. I-, I just believe that the concept or this idea you know, just wouldn't pop up in your head if it wasn't something that you were supposed to learn from it. So keep going and don't be afraid to, you know, uh, reinvent yourself. I started Liquid Courage on this. I mean, I'm embarrassed if I could show you the screenshot on how the um, user interface looked. And it was it was horrible. But you know what? We progressed from there. And now, you know, it's more in a place where, you know, I would co-sign it. So you have to start somewhere and, you know, keep going is the advice that I would offer to um, entrepreneurs listening. Are you an entrepreneur who needs capital, coaching, and connections? Visit startupfunding.co to get started now. Rochelle Rinkins, a supply chain expert, Leverage her 10 plus year experience in the consumer products industry to create a virtual beauty destination to serve the lifestyle of time deprived women on the go. Welcome, Rochelle. Hi, Rochelle. Welcome to Startup Funding. Hey, Roshana. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Of course. Now, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and when you decided to become an entrepreneur? Wow. Well, I'm Rochelle Roseman Rinkins, originally from Fort Lauderdale. And I think that like entrepreneurship has always been like in my blood. I am um, Haitian American. And so my parents are Haitian and it's just, you know, something that you know, I kind of grew up with. It was my family is very entrepreneurial, um, but I I felt that I wanted to learn the skills first. And so my path was to um, get my master's. And so I attended Florida A&M University in the five-year program. And um, my concentration was in the area of management. And I decided and got a great role um, at Procter & Gamble. And I spent eight years there basically in the strategic sourcing group where primarily, you know, I was brokering deals and I felt very natural at doing that because if you know anybody that's Caribbean, um, we're always trying to negotiate a better deal. And so it was great that I was, you know, I could basically get paid for shopping, uh, you know, being a professional shopper. And so then I got a call and I moved, you know, here to the, to the Bay area um, going on four years um, to work for, you know, one of the largest consumer electronics companies. I decided that, you know, after leaving P&G, that this was finally, you know, my opportunity to, you know, fill a void that I felt was in the the beauty space. One, I didn't feel that my Black is Beautiful was enough in terms of, you know, being able to, you know, truly target you know, women that look like me. And then I felt that um, there was no beauty brands that was really empowering women. And so when you think about the name Liquid Courage, you know, you automatically, your back straightens up a little bit. You know, you, you get a little taller when you think about, you know, Liquid Courage. And that's exactly what, you know, I wanted to do. Liquid Courage is about, you know, women conquering their life, their families, uh, career, and everything in between. And so that's like really my entrepreneurship journey. And I felt that I had no other choice because it was really 
you know, it's part of my bloodline, but I wanted to make sure that I got the skills first so that I can be successful in my my entrepreneurship um, journey. You just mentioned about the name Liquid Courage makes you want to straighten your back. And I must <laughs> admit that I love all your Instagram images. I'm always like, yeah, like they just make me feel, yes, I'm courageous. I could do this and all the beautiful, vibrant colors. Like, I love it. <laughs> I love it. So just wanted to say that real quick. So what's going on with Liquid Courage Cos Cosmetics right now that has you really excited? Well, we just concluded our Kiva campaign. And so one of the things, you know, that I had to be real about, I mean, I can't sell courage and lack courage on my side and investing and getting money has been something that has been a very intimidating process, which is why I was so excited to hear about like your podcast, because I think it's going to be great, you know, for other entrepreneurs like myself to like kind of tap into the mind of investors. But I mean, we just concluded that campaign, raised $5,000. And it was important for me to, I believe in crawl, walk and run, start small because there's a lot of people that can follow you on social media, like your page. But when someone actually decides to invest in you, that's when you know that you have a real, a good thing going. And so that's something that um, I just concluded, which is exciting. And I mean, it's holiday season, right? So, you know, being in the, the online retail space, I'm just, you know, small, bus small business Saturday just concluded on Saturday. We have, you know, the Christmas and holiday shopping. And I am just so excited because we have a lot of great products. New fall collection is out. And then lastly, we just concluded our Ipsy campaign, which was phenomenal. Ipsy is basically a subscription box. They're home to like 21 million beauty enthusiasts. And I was just very fortunate to, you know, be featured as one of the beauty companies as an Ipsy offer. And we sold out in three days, which was, you know, being a new brand in the Ipsy community, that was just awesome. And, you know, everyone kept like, how did you do that? And I'm like, you know, when you build a community and your community believes in you and they want you to be successful, then, you know, that's the outcome. And one of the things that, uh, you know, being here in Silicon Valley, I think that you're going to always be pushed on how can you make your product or your set or your service more, you know, like infuse the technical piece in it. And so, you know, one of the things that I've been trying to do a better job in is how can I curate a experience for my consumers? My consumers are like you, right? They're on the go. They don't really have time to be in Sephora two, three hours and so I want to make sure that the products, you know, and where those products are placed reflect that on the go woman. And so I'm excited to share that I've partnered with a couple of like fashion apps, as well as a beauty app like Lovely Lou that that Liquid Courage is part of that, you know, product profile now. So as you go to those apps, you know, from a click of a button, you can also, you know, be able to purchase Liquid Courage. So that's what's going on. So I have to ask you a, a kind of a personal question. So I know nothing about makeup. And two years ago, someone said, I'm going to figure out one style or, you know, one set of makeup that you can wear, one eyeshadow, one blush, and I'm still wearing it. And that's what I have on today. <laughs> so do you have any kind of system for someone like me who's just like, I just want one thing that'll work and then <laughs> just go? The funny thing about it is if you, like, connect with anybody that knew me like maybe 10, 15 years ago, everybody is surprised that I am now in the beauty space. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a girl that you're talking about wore my first lipstick at 23 because my sorority sisters dragged me to, you know, the actual Mac counter because, you know, had to make sure that, you know, I was looking good. I can talk to you about my process and it's really, you just have to experiment um, one of the things that I love about the Liquid Courage woman is that she may not know like all of the different, you know, OK, tight lining and what's the new, you know, the latest thing. But she doesn't mind going online and trusting, you know, her favorite beauty enthusiast online or on YouTube. Right. And that's where a lot of my sales come from. And so experiment if you have find someone 
you know, that you trust, that gives very good advice and you like what they're doing. And, you know, basically, you know, they're going to give you recommendations. There's so many great, you know, YouTube, you know, bloggers and all that out there. And, you know, that's what I would recommend. But I am very easy. I love the no makeup makeup look because it's all about the lips for me. And so I always recommend a little eyeshadow. As you'll see, I have no eyeshadow. So I put a little eyeliner, you know, mascara, have my eyebrows on point and a pop of the lip. And it, I still, I feel like it still gives me that very polished look without, you know, having so much makeup on. So that's my go-to look and maybe it could work for you. <laughs> well, thank you for that. <laughs> so as entrepreneurs, we have lots of opportunities and we're not able to take every single one. Can you talk about an opportunity that you missed and what you learned from that experience? I mean, I can talk to you about, I mean, so many times I am pitched opportunities to, you know, like have us, you know, allow Liquid Courage to be part of, you know, different opportunities like subscription boxes. And I'll I'll talk about my my Ipsy story here. When they initially approached me, they wanted Liquid Courage to actually be in the box. Well, I'm still considered a startup beauty brand. And when the numbers just didn't work, right? I, I'm not a, you know, L'Oreal or, you know, a Procter and Gamble where I just have you know, disposable income where I can say, hey, $50,000 on a subscription box where there may or may not be value that comes from that. And so um, that didn't work, you know, that didn't work for me and it didn't work for the brand. Uh, I mean, I wanted to work with them so bad and I'm like, oh my gosh, am I, you know, leaving such a huge opportunity on the table? But you know what? They came back and we worked something that worked for both of us, right? I think that as entrepreneurs, there's a lot of things that we can do for the hype, you know, especially with social media now. Everything is about, you know, the look. And 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 I, I think that you have to be very careful as an entrepreneur to just make sure that, you know, the data and the numbers are driving your decisions. And that's that's where, you know, I am. And that's that's kind of like my philosophy. And so that's an example of, you know, initially the numbers did not work, but we kind of came to an artful compromise on something that did work for um, Liquid Courage and which is the Ipsy offer. Awesome. And how did you know that you were meant to be doing what you're doing now? Man, I, to be honest with you, I am a, you know, supply chain girl and um, not, you know, I wouldn't consider myself this extreme like beauty enthusiast. I just love the business of women. I love empowering women. And I felt that I could do something very different in the beauty space because regardless if you're black or you're from, you know, another part of the world, I felt that beauty was that one thing that allowed women to connect for whatever reason. I mean, regardless of your background. So if I, you know, I'm like, what? what's that lip color, right? I don't care what you do for a living and how much you make or where you come from. At that particular moment, I am connecting with you, one, as a woman and with beauty. And I felt that, you know, I was destined to do that part of it. And, you know, I think that not to get all churchified on the podcast, but yesterday, you know, the the message was really around, you know, basically when I think about my own, my own faith and how that kind of lines up with my personal vision and how I plan to serve, you know, my creator, it's a great thing when you are able to do something that kind of lines up with that. And I felt that, you know, liquid courage in the name. And, you know, when I see women, like I had a hard day, And I wanted, you know, I needed to go and talk to my boss about getting this raise and I wasn't going to do it. And then I saw that Liquid Courage lipstick in my bag. I put that lipstick on and it gave me the courage to go in there and to speak to my manager about the bonus or that raise that, you know, I, I deserve. And so that's when you know that, 
you know, you're doing the right thing when the stars are in line. And, you know, when uh, Rochelle Parham from the former marketing chief marketing officer of eBay gave us a shout out in Marie Claire. And I know based on my P&G experience, how expensive that can be just to get a mention in that. That's when you know, like you're, you're kind of doing the stars are aligning for you. The Ipsy, all of these different things that just in my mind, like the universe just cooperated with the made up mind. And that's when I knew that I was really in my domain and I was doing what I was designed to do. And how did your past experiences lead you to where you are today? Well, you know, one, I consider myself, you know, basically a, a buyer and I love the supply chain. I think that it's it's great. You can design great products, but at the end of the day, like logistics and so supply chain people ensure that that great product that you see on the television or online actually gets to you and it meets the quality standards. And when I think about, you know, beauty, I'm, I mean, I'm negotiating all of my contracts with my manufacturers. You know, I'm also a logistics professional. So it matters to me in terms of, you know, ensuring that that product, our products are delivered on time. And so, I mean, I'm very deliberate about, you know, the carriers that I'm using, um, what time, you know, I'm sending out the orders because I do know, you know, the movement of line haul trucks and things like that. So all of that, you know, is embedded in the way that I do business and how I create, you know, a great customer experience for Liquid Courage customers. So beyond your personal experience in supply chain, what role did mentorship play in helping you make these decisions? I'm so glad that you brought this up because mentorship is such a huge thing. One of the things that I didn't know what I wanted to do yet, you know, in terms of Liquid Courage, I I mean, it was an iterative process that got me to Liquid Courage, but there were other things that I had on the table as far as beauty. And I actually created a, a board of advisors that actually you know, helped me and, and gave me mentoring. And I was very deliberate about who I decided would be part of that brain trust. And that played a very pivotal role in terms of, you know, why I decided to go in the area that I decided to go in. And they, they also helped me with resources, right? And so I may not have a specific connection with, you know, this particular blogger or this particular company, but people in my, I call them my board of advisors, they may. And so it was, it's a great opportunity. And I still lean on them even today um, because they provide some very valuable, you know, uh, resources, expertise, domain knowledge that, you know, helps me move the company forward. So mentorship is definitely, you know, something that is needed that I would recommend, you know, every entrepreneur, you, if you don't have one, do it ASAP, because I think that that, at least for me, it's helped tremendously, right? Because you don't know everything. And when you are able to tap into somebody else's network and, you know, their experience, I think it just makes you better and eventually makes the company better. And what process did you go through to select the perfect mentors for, for yourself? I think one, just understanding the business that I'm going into, the industry that I'm going into, um, what experience do I have, right? So I have supply chain, logistics background. So do I really, I didn't really need another like logistics person on my board of advisors because I felt that, you know, I got the 80 for the 20. But when I think about, you know, selling, so you know, the B2C side. It's something that I really never had experience with. And so, you know, it was important for me to look at folks who have that experience, right? Like, you know, I'm just making this up like an Amazon.com. Again, they may not be in beauty, but they have someone on, on that side has experience with being able to deliver to B2C customers because right now Liquid Courage is an online business. And so, I, I mean, the process is under basically what are the gap areas that you have? What's your own strategy and your priorities? And, you know, how do you get the right 
you know, build the right team to help you move your top priorities forward. And honestly, that's why I was, I always tell people, not all of us are fortunate to have, you know, parents that can give them a million dollar, a small million dollar loan to start their business. And so corporate, you know, in my connections, I've been very fortunate to work at a lot of Fortune 500 companies like Procter & Gamble, Microsoft, Goldman Sachs, and even Apple. And so I definitely lean on those connections that I've made working in, in those establishments to also tap them to be mentors. And you mentioned how you're using your corporate experience to help grow your company, but how has your education prepared you to be an entrepreneur? I mean, the basics, right, start with, you know, the education, right? And so I got my, as I mentioned in my intro, I got my master's at Florida A&M University, go Rattlers. And, you know, education was definitely important to me and you know, there are times where I have to crack open those old textbooks, right, to learn about what did I, you know, what was that, you know, theory again? But, you know, that's the great thing about education. I feel that it just gets you into the mind of, you know, I, my one of my favorite taglines is unlearn, learn, relearn. And it's like so many things have changed. I mean, I graduated in 2005, right? So I'm very a decade plus removed away from, you know, what's going on right now. So like Google and and all of those things have been, you know, my friend, I'm attending a training on Wednesday to learn about Facebook Pixel, you know, and how it could help grow in my business from an ad standpoint. I install Facebook Pixel myself by going to YouTube and learning. And and that's that's really, I think, what education has taught me is, you know, to be curious. And that that same, you know, going through the same exercise of, okay, how do you put the, all the right information to build this, you know, um, business case? And I mean, life is a business case. Look at courage is a business case. And so the same approach and principles that I've learned, you know, in theory, I'm actually putting it into practice now. So I definitely recommend if you can, you know, get the education one. I think that it allows you to be very disciplined. But I mean, the greatest thing is that it puts you in connection with other great people that, again, that you can tap into later that could eventually be on your board of advisors or you can even tap them to be become members of your team. Right. How many Shark Tank episodes do you watch? And you're like, oh, I met this guy from grad school. Right. So I I think that a lot of people see it as, oh, I'm going to get an education. But no, you're getting an education plus you're tapping into, you know, resources. I mean, I, I had an intern um, at the University of Chicago who helped me with, the you know, some of the research that I was a, you know, I was I needed for Liquid Courage. And she had access just as a student. And I would have to pay, you know, tens of thousands of dollars to get that same you know, consumer research. So think about it like in a more broader context than just, oh, I'm getting my master's or, oh, I'm getting, you know, my bachelor's. Think about the network that you're able to build. Think about, you know, the resources in college that you're able to tap into for free or part of your, you know, part of just being a student there as well. So that's how education has played a role in my business. So you have had this awesome career at Fortune 500 companies or like 100 companies, right? really. So was there anything holding you back from diving into entrepreneurship? I mean, the options are, I mean, as you go up in your career, right, you know, it's the golden parachute, right? They start to offer all types of things, you know, stock and Here's an extra spot bonus here and there, right? And, you know, quite frankly, it, it's something I, I'm still balancing, you know, my nine to five with my startup. So I haven't gone full throttle yet. One, because there, I, I think about going into entrepreneurship, you know, going to entrepreneurship, doing that the right way. I see a lot of people kind of jump in head first without 
really thinking through it, not having, you know, that 24, 36 month emergency fund and all those types of things. So I think that that could be, you know, you have to, you have to play it, play it right. And so my overall, you know, philosophy as it relates to that is, you know, you're, when you're good, um, people are always going to, you know, throw money and it's going to be difficult, but you have to know like what your personal goals are. And I write them down. My husband and I, we've written it down when liquid courage does X, you know, then we start to do Y when liquid courage it's again, I'm very data driven. So I let the data drive, you know, my decisions on when the right time would be to, to leave corporate America. And so a lot of entrepreneurs, as you mentioned, do like jump in without planning without yes. and just go off of their emotion. They have this great idea. So I really love the fact that you are data driven and have this whole plan of action that's not necessarily emotional. And um, a lot of us as entrepreneurs, we need to be passionate and believe, but we also need to be planners. So I just really love that you have integrate that, integrated that in to um, your strategy. And, and unlike my other guests, you have self-funded and bootstrapped um, your company. And I just had an episode with another guest and she said that is the best way to actually build a company because that's what, you know, Spanx did. And so you have gotten all of these great partnerships while still working. So how has the bootstrap experience uh, worked for you? And what's your perspective thus far? Well, I mean, again, I, I think that if you have access to capital, then you should definitely go after that because at the end of the day, it allows you to grow your company faster. You know, for for me, I decided that I wanted to to bootstrap first because I didn't really want to give equity in my company so early on without, you know, figuring out what liquid courage wants to be when we grow up. And so my nine to five has afforded me the opportunity to do exactly that, to learn and to iterate and, you know, have a a business model that I feel is investable and I want it to be successful. And so, you know, bootstrap bootstrapping, in my opinion, allows you to, you know, test out different, you know, things before you get to that point where you're asking for thousands and thousands of dollars. And, you know, because that comes at a price as well, right? Whether it's a board seat, whether it's, you know, shares or what have you. And I was just not prepared at this time to do that. And I, I could afford it. You know, that's, I mean, quite frankly, I treat my nine to five as, you know, my angel investor. And, you know, that's the philosophy that I have. So if you have the means to do it yourself, I'm not saying one approach is better than the other. It's just the approach that I'm taking because I want to hold on to as much equity as possible, you know, before I go out and the sharks, you know, want to take 30, 40, 50% of my company. Right. And then without me really figuring things out. So that's been my approach. So what makes you and Liquid Courage Cosmetics unique? I would say that like I said, Liquid Courage is really an online destination. I am purely focused on women that are beauty enthusiasts that are on the go. And they, like I said, don't have time to sit at a makeup counter for hours. If you look at my competition, they have primarily stayed in the retail space with online kind of being a secondary or tertiary kind of like, okay, let's put something online. But online is my main focus. And, you know, Liquid Courage is not just, you know, we don't have an app yet, but a lot of these companies or my competition, they have their own apps, but are they on other apps as well so that, you know, the women like I'm I'm targeting can have access to Liquid Courage regardless of where they are online. Also, I think that, you know, Liquid Courage, we offer like high pigmentation, liquid lipsticks. I'm not trying to be everything to everybody. It's purely, you know, lipsticks right now from a beauty perspective. And I, I just want to become like the apple of lipsticks, right? And just really curate products that I feel 
go well with all different types of skin tones. You go to some of these companies and you're like, this 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 collection was not made for me. I don't see not one color that could go on my skin. I want women to know, like, again, regardless of who you are and whether you're olive, you know, have you have an olive skin tone or you're brown or black or white or pale, you can still see yourself in Liquid Courage. And I, you know, I have my primary promo flyer is a picture of four women, one black, one Latino, one Asian, and the other is from, where is she from? Oh, she's actually Native American. And so like when you see that picture, you're like, oh my gosh, like I I can see myself, you know, in these women because this same color looking very different on all of these skin tones. And that's why I feel like, you know, really sets us apart. Also, um, one of the things that I've been working on, which I actually raised money from Kiva on is, you know, actual events that women can go to, to connect as a community. Community is very important to me. And so like I have a circle of courage, uh, Facebook page that has over 2,500 women. And my first power, I called it a power brunch where we talked about image matters. And one of the things that I learned, even in my corporate career is that there's this concept of pie, performance, image, and exposure. And how as you grow up the corporate ladder, you know, everyone expects you to kind of do your job, but then this I and this E piece become more important. Well, here's an example of how I'm merging my the two worlds of, you know, beauty and actually giving women something concrete that they can use to advance their careers, whether they're an entrepreneur, an investor, you know, or, you know, in corporate America. So I think that that's the other thing that really differentiates liquid courage is the fact that we have a community and we try, you know, I, I have events that tie the community together with beauty as that intersection. Now for these events, are they only in the Silicon Valley or are you also in Atlanta? Can I come? Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That was part of what the Kiva fundraising was for. Um, I raised $5,000 to expand, you know, the Power Brunch series. And one of the places that we're going to is Atlanta. So when we get there, definitely got to hit you up, New York, as well as um, D.C. And again, using data, that's where most of, you know, my consumers are in those regions. So I wanted to make sure that I'm able to touch my community and they are able to connect with other courage champions in, in their respective regions. I'm very excited. So do you have a timeline for these? Uh, Coming soon in 2017. (laughs) Okay. Well, I'll be on the lookout. Can you tell me more about your team and how you built your team? You're looking at her. Okay. Um, I am definitely a solo founder to the core, but no. So it's me, obviously. My husband is, uh, you know, in the PR communication space. So he definitely, you know, helps me out in that realm. I have someone, Aria, who works basically my community engagement manager. Mm -hmm. And so she basic all the great things that you see on social media, like 95% of that is attributed to Ariel. She's, she's great at what she does. And honestly, and this is another tip from an entrepreneurship standpoint is I, I outsource, right? So Fiverr has become my friend. I have my favorite web developers on there. And so if there's anything going on with, you know, the liquid curd site or a, an update or an advancement I want to make. I have my go-to person, Peter, and he hooks it up for a fraction of the cost. And so Fiverr has really become a great resource for me. But the primary folks right now are myself, my husband, and Ariel all from a social media standpoint. Yeah, I don't know what I would do without Fiverr. I have. To, I must tell you. Yes. <laughs> and I know there's a lot of other sites like Odesk and everything, but I yep. still just go to Fiverr. Does Odes even exist anymore? I'm not sure. Exactly. I don't, I don't <laughs> so now it's time for the speed round. What is the best advice that you've ever received? Done is better than perfect. 
Can you share a personal habit that contributes to your success? I over obsess over the details. And what book would you share with the Startup Funding Nation community and why? Ooh, The Secret. It's not a business book, but it'll change your life. See, I was just talking about that book and that movie last night. So wow. we're, we're in alignment. <laughs> so like, really? <laughs> Wow. Perfect. So I'm a huge advocate on living a balanced lifestyle. Sometimes people call me the wealthy yogi. So I love to ask people questions about how they incorporate balance into their life. So what does a typical day look like for you? So one of the things that I've had to become very comfortable with is unlike my Haitian mom, I'm not going to cook every single day. I'm not going to you know, clean the house every single, I mean, we just have a different path. And so I outsource the heck out of, you know, daily chores when I, when I can. And so one of the, I guess the things that helps me in terms of work-life balance is I have someone that comes in every two weeks and cleans up the house. And while they're cleaning, I am on the treadmill or the elliptical working out. Um, I definitely have a a long way to go as it relates to, you know, having a better work-life balance. But that's one of the things that I've done to to, to kind of help me with self-care is to outsource those things that you're really not adding any value to. And so that's that's just one thing that I do in terms of like just having work-life balance. And I think when you have, you need an accountability partner and, you know, my husband is a great accountability partner when I've been on the computer too long or, you know, or I haven't had like a self-care moment or gone get my nails done, whatever, or massage, whatever that thing is, have an accountability partner. You know, I just did this for a friend um, who is also running a startup and I know that she loves to dance. And so I just said, hey. Kristen, when was the last time, you know, you went out and you actually danced? And she's like, oh, my gosh, I haven't danced in such a long time. You know, and I I basically sent her twenty dollars because it's twenty dollars for a class session. I was like, here, your next, you know, dance session is on me, you know. And so I think that having an accountability partner is a, another great way to infuse that work life balance. Well, I also love to dance. So, you know. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> so I know that you have a full-time career, plus you run your business. So when you do have free time, what kinds of activities do you like to do? Well, my husband and I love going to the movies. So we just saw like a Christmas movie. We've also, because we both have some weight loss goals. And so your your post with the Wealthy Yogi has definitely been inspiring me to get more active. And so one of the great things and being in the Northern California area, there's like great like trails. And so we basically hike every Saturday for a few hours at Ulam Rock Park. And so those are the types of things, you know, I'm really easy. Um, we went to a an Egyptian museum on Saturday. I mean, and I, I stayed in the cosmetic section for at least 45 minutes just studying. You just never know when inspiration will come to you. And so those are the types of things that, I mean, movies, museum, you know, hiking, and just getting, trying to get out. Okay. I'm not traveling. Oh yes. Traveling. And see, so we just, we just went to Santorini, Greece, Mykonos, Athens, and Paris for 10 days. So that's another thing that I love to do. I love all of those places. <laughs> so imagine you woke up tomorrow morning in a brand new world, identical to earth but you knew no one. You still have all the experience and knowledge you currently have. Your food and shelter is taken care of, but all you have is a laptop and $500. What do you do for the next seven days? Common interest so that I can immediately start, you know, plugging into a community because that's important. That's important to me. And 
basically, you know, kind of starting from there to just really get get plugged in and and take it from there. Okay. So can you tell our listeners who want to try Liquid Courage Cosmetics where to go to find it? Sure. You can go to liquidcouragecosmetics.com. Also, we are on social media. Um, one of the premier like go-to social media channels are Instagram. So it's uh, our Instagram channel is Liquid Courage underscore cosmetics. And we're on Facebook, Liquid Courage Cosmetics. And if you ever have any questions, you can always reach out to me at Rochelle at the liquid courage.com. And do you have any final words of wisdom that you want to share with our listeners? Well, before I go, I wanted to make sure that your audience gets something special from us. So if you are interested in trying out Liquid Courage for the first time, I am giving all of your listeners 20% off. And all they have to do is enter startup in the coupon um, code box. Again, that startup in the coupon code box. I'm so excited. <laughs> Will you get 20% off of Liquid Courage Cosmetics? <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> and I guess my words of advice is basically, you know, keep going. Just when you think that you have kind of reached your limit, as long as you feel that you ha- you're doing it, you have well intentions. I-, I just believe that the concept or this idea, you know, just wouldn't pop up in your head if it wasn't something that you were supposed to learn from it. So keep going and don't be afraid to, you know, um, reinvent yourself. I started Liquid Courage on this. I mean, I'm embarrassed if I could show you the screenshot on how the um, user interface looked. And it was it was horrible. But you know what? We progressed from there. And now, you know, it's more in a place where, you know, I would co-sign it. So you have to start somewhere and, you know, keep going is the advice that I would offer to um, entrepreneurs listening. Well, thank you so much for being a guest on Startup Funding. Thank you. This was fun. I'm so excited. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you for listening to Startup Funding with Dr. Roshana Novellis. Visit StartupFunding.co for tools, resources, and events. Join us next time for another edition of Startup Funding.